Well, good afternoon or good morning, whatever time you're watching this, and, and welcome to One Man's Faith. My name is Neil Owen. Glad to have you with me. You know, it, it gets kind of lonely when you don't show up. You know, it's like being at church. You know, the pastor, for some reason, has to be there. I'm not sure why, because everybody else can decide not to come. Have you ever, thought, have you ever noticed that? You know, what if the pastor decided, hey, I want to stay at home and have a sick day. Why isn't that allowed? Yeah, well, yeah, well, but I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And so we're going we're gonna to look at God's Word and uh, see what He has to say today and, uh, and just learn some really neat things. Um, before we do, let me make an announcement that uh, on the, <clears throat> I think it's the first, the first of September, we're showing the movie Mom's Night Out at 7 o'clock at New Hope Fellowship. So if you'd like to see that, if you haven't seen it, hey, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good, clean, fun, kind of Christian, uh, Christian movie. So come on out on the 1st at 7 o'clock for that movie. Okay, <clears throat> now that's all my announcements for right now. So I want to jump right into uh, uh, our study uh, we've been looking at the names of God. Uh, and I used uh, Exodus 34 as kind of our springboard and our kind of theme verse because it says that the Lord descended in a cloud and he passed by in front of Moses and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. And so God gives a description of himself, but <clears throat> names mean things. We don't use it as much now in, in our modern world, but names have meaning. Your name has a meaning, and every time your name is called out, its meaning is called out. My name is Neil. My middle name is Neil. And Neil means courage. So anytime you say, hey, Neil, you're saying, hey, courage, you're speaking kind of a destiny out. Noah, who is my technician, his name means peace. And so every time, you know, we say Noah, we're, we're speaking out a destiny for him of peace. And this is the way, this is the way our names are set up. That's why we were given names. Well, God has names and titles. And the first one we see as we open our Bible is Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. And we've talked about that. That word is Elohim, which is a plural word, but it's used singularly. In other words, it says, He called, speaking about God. It doesn't say they, because being plural, you, we could technically translate that as in the beginning, God's, plural. But we know that that's not right for God. God is one, but he's made up of three. And we're going to see that a little bit more here um, today, hopefully, if, we, if, we, if I can get there. Then something happens in chapter 2 of Genesis. It goes from, and God to, and the Lord God, starting with verse 4. And then throughout the rest of the word, you see, and the Lord God, or the Lord our God. It's, it's Yahweh Elohim, putting the two together. <clears throat> um, but whenever uh, a Jewish person speaks or reads and he sees the term Yahweh, he, he won't say it because they reverence that um, so much. And so they'll substitute for Yahweh, they'll substitute the word Adonai, which is another word for Lord. And we looked at what Lord meant. It, may, it means that he is, he is the one that has control over us. At least that's what he wants. He wants to have control over you. He wants you to turn your life over to him so that he can direct you in the way that you should go because he made us. He knows which way we should go. Uh, and so we substitute Adonai. Now, an interesting thing 
that happened back in the first century was they took the vowels of Adonai and put them with Yahweh, the consonants Yahweh, and they formed a new word that we hear a lot. It's called Yehovah or Jehovah. So it's a, that's a made-up word. <laughs> it's, not, it's not in the Bible. It's a made-up word by taking the vowels of Adonai and putting them to the constants, the constants of um, Yahweh, forming the word Yehovah. And we use that. And, you know, we sing songs like Jehovah Jireh. Um, as I mentioned before, there are no there are no J's in the Hebrew. It is Yah. Um, and I think through some Germanic influence or whatever, it, it, it was changed to Jah, Jehovah. Uh, Yahweh is another example. The W there. Uh, there's not a W in, uh, in, in Hebrew. It's a, it's a Vav for V, but the German influence changed that also to, to a W. So we, so we, instead of saying Yah, Yahweh, which is really the way it should be said, we say Yahweh, and that's just, that's just stuck throughout history, and they're the words we use. Now, <clears throat> Adonai is a substitution, all right? Just like Jehovah is a substitution for Yahweh. Interestingly, when Abram speaks to God, he uses the term, he says, O Lord God, which is Adonai Yahweh. Actually, he's putting Lord, Lord together, so to speak. But he says, Adonai Yahweh. He says, O Lord Yahweh. And Throughout, especially Genesis 15, this is the terminology that, um, that, that Abram uses with God. So, uh, I think the last time we got together, we, no, we were looking at something else. Um, we also looked at the word Yahweh. So, we have Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh, all, for, all f- terms for, for God. And <clears throat> God gave us His name. Okay, he told us what his name is. And his name isn't God. That's a term. God's name is actually Yahweh. He tells us in um, Exodus 3 when, Mo- when Moses met God on the mountain and he saw the burning bush. And God said, hey, I'm going to send you back to them. And Moses says, well, what's your name? I mean, what do I say is sending me? And God said, Moses, you tell them, I am that I am. And God said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am becomes Yahweh. That is his name. Another passage in Exodus, it says, this is my memorial name. This is my name. So why do we, and I mentioned this, I think, last time, why do we have three names? Yahweh, Adonai, and Elohim. Why? Is it because he's plural? No, I don't think that. Here's what I believe. Elohim is who he is. He is three in one. He is the creator of the world. But to know him as Adonai, we have to know him as Elohim. We have to know that he exists, that he is one, but he's made up, he's made up of three. And then we can know him as Lord, Adonai the one who has control over us, the one who makes the decisions or has, has the power to make the decisions for us. Okay? To know him as Yahweh, we have to first know him as Adonai. Why? Because Yahweh is a personal name. It is for his people, you and me, to use to call out to him. That is his name. 
Yahweh. Just as my name is Neil, God's name is Yahweh. And it's the name we should use for him. It's the name we should use for him. Um, there you go. I, I just got thrown. Sorry. <laughs> we must know him as God to let him be Lord of our lives. And we must know him as Lord, Adonai, before we can know him as our personal God, Yahweh. All right. And Yahweh is the name that he wants us to know him as. Now, interestingly, he gave us names. Uh, he attached names to his name to show us his character. And we've been looking at some of these. After we looked at um, Yahweh, Adonai, and, and Elohim, the next time, the next term we dealt with was Yahweh Yidrei, which we say lovingly, Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. In chapter 22 of Genesis, it says, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. And he named the place, or he called the place, Yehovah Yireh, God my provider. And so we see one of the things that God does for us is he provides. He provides for you and me. He wants to be our provider. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Yahweh shall supply all you need, Yahweh, according to his riches in glory. And so one of the ways we can know God is that he provides for us. He wants to provide for us. He knows our needs and he wants to supply that need. He, he, he lovingly wants to. We don't have to beg, borrow, or steal to get him to supply for us, to provide for us, because that's his nature, is to do that. Okay, with that, we need to take a break. So let's take a break, get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. 